So these are the details of the question. What will be the maximum save speed? Are we are we true? One hundred and seventy meter per second. There you go. What one hundred and seventy-three point two one meter per second. Okay, let's have somebody. Um, a seconder who would second address Akusha's answer. Who would second Akusha's answer? All right, so this is a um a typical question on banking of roads, but here we are considering friction as well. So for a bank route, if you are considering friction, the maximum um velocity or speed is given by square root of Uh -huh. Square root of this is R G times a uh -huh. mu plus tan theta mu plus tan theta all divided by all divided by one, one minus minus mu, mu times. So for for a bound road, when we are considering friction. This is the expression for the maximum velocity. If we are not considering friction, this is just x. The maximum velocity must be anything less or equal to this. So over here, when we are considering friction, it must be anything less or equal to what we have there. So get the difference. So V max in this case will be equal to square root of the radius is thousand, so thousand times ten, all times zero point five plus ten forty five, all divided by one minus zero point five. times tan of 45 degree again. So the rest is about calculation, all right? And I think the answer is 173 meter per second. Mr. Dia. Hello, okay. Mr. Dia, please, what if you are considering only friction um, on a horizontal road, not a banked road? Oh, the, um, if the road is not banked, then the centripetal force is equal to the frictional force. Okay, so over here, the um, what keeps the car within the circular path is due to friction. It's due to friction when the road is not banked. When the road is banked and frictional force is non-existent, nil, then this is an expression for the maximum velocity. So over here, it is the it is the R sine theta component of the normal reaction that provides the centripetal force. So there's it. 
if there is a consideration for friction when the road is banked, then this is what we use to calculate the maximum velocity. Okay, are you okay? Yes, please. Okay, last example. Last example. Okay, I'll give you two because of a queer's question. So please get ready to, to write it down. An unbanked curve, an unbanked curve has a radius of 60 meters. An unbanked curve has a radius of 60 meters. What is the maximum speed at which a car can make a turn? Okay, so I'm taking it again. An unbanked curve has a radius of 60 meters. An unbanked curve has a radius of 60 meters. What is the maximum speed at which a car can make a turn? What is the maximum speed at which a car can make a turn if the coefficient of static friction is... Hello? What is the maximum speed at which a car can make a turn if the coefficient of static friction is 0 0.75? What is the maximum speed at which a car can make a turn if the coefficient of static friction is 0 0.75? Then the other question, I'm giving you two, okay, at a go. A cyclist, a cyclist riding a bicycle, a cyclist riding a bicycle at a speed of 14 root three meter per second at a speed of 14 root 3, 14 root of 3 meter per second. Takes a turn around a circular road. Takes a turn around a circular road of radius, of radius, 20 root 3 meter. So the radius of the circular road is 20 root of 3 meter without skidding. So it takes a, takes a turn around a circular road of radius 20 root 3 meter without skidding. Given that Gravity is equal to 9.8 meter per second squared. Given that gravity is equal to 9.8 meter per second squared, what is the what is his inclination? Agosia. Agosia. Please, can you send the question to the group? I got disconnected. So, okay. What is the, in, what is his inclination to the vertical? What is his inclination to the vertical? Let me take a short and then put it in the group.
For the unbanked road, we are told that the radius is radius is um sixty sixty meter. The maximum speed, okay, that's what we are looking for. If the coefficient of starter friction is zero point zero point seven five. So we are looking for V. Akuya, Adoma. Mr. Dia. As I told you, when the road is not banked, the centripetal force which keeps the car in circular motion is provided by the frictional force. So MV squared over R is equal to mu mg. And this is frictional force. We got frictional force F is equal to mu R, normal reaction. But for a body flat on the on the surface, reaction is this. So so M M will cancel out. So V squared will be equal to mu R G. Therefore, V must be any value less or equal to the square root of mu rg. And this is the expression for maximum, okay. So the question requires that we determine the maximum speed. So V maximum will simply be equal to square root of 0 0.75 times radius, which is 60 times. Here, we are given gravity. We are not given a specific value for gravity. So it is, we take the 10. Let's help me calculate. This will be equal to 75 times 6. Then you take the square root, 75 times six. Square root of this would give us the maximum speed. Please calculate it for me. What is root of that? Come again. 21.21. Meter 21. per second. So it means that the velocity for the for the car to make the turn without scaling the velocity must be anything less or equal to this value. If the velocity is greater than this, the car will scale. So the value must be anything less or equal to 21.21 meter per second. All right, the, the other, the second question. And about five minutes for you to go through. Kenneth, are you there? Kenneth.
Sita has got 60 degrees. 60 degrees. We shall see. Uh -huh. And a, and a second, uh, Immaculate. Immaculate, Janice, Nanama, and the rest of you. Akuya. Akosia. Akosia. Utubia. Uh -huh. What what did you get for Tita? Okay, so this question is about Banked Road. Equia Adoma. Equia Adoma. She's going to eat. So this question is about banked road. Okay, when we are we are overlooking friction, or when there is no friction. So we know that v will be equal to square root of R G tan theta without friction. Therefore, we have v squared equal to rg times tan theta. v is 14 root of 3. So this squared is equal to 20 root of 3 times 9.8 times tan theta. And theta, therefore, is equal to 14 squared times 3, all divided by 20 root of 3 times 9.8. So the rest calculator work. What is 14 squared times three? That is five, eight, eight. Five, eight, eight, divided by, divided by, what's the denominator? Twenty root through uh, root three times nine point eight. That is three nine nine point four eight. Three nine nine point four eight. Okay, so tan theta is equal to one point what? One point. One point four seven one. Four seven one. Therefore, theta is equal to the tan inverse of 1.471, which is, is that 60? That is 55.8. Approximately 56. Yes, sir. Degree. Okay, you got 60. How did you get 60? Mr. Dia. Mm -hmm. Please, the denominator is 339, not 399. I I have three 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 nine. Is that three three nine? Yes, but when you multiply 20 with 3 times 9.8, you get 339, not 399. Okay. Thank you. So, still 
588 divided by 339, 1.1.71. 1. 1. 1. 731. 731. Therefore, theta is equal to the tan inverse of 1.731. And what's that? 59. So, okay. Uh, 59 point what? 984. So, approximately 60. Agosha, you were, you were right earlier. In fact, yes, the, the answer we had previously cannot be seen within the alternatives here. So it means that truly that's the denominator was a problem. Okay, thanks for the correction. So this is how to apply banked roads and then unbanked roads. Any question? So please with the banked roads, are these the only formula that with the the bank, and exactly, exactly. So with a bank road, either with friction or without friction and with friction and. So you see, we are we can have for bank road without friction and with friction. And we can also have on bank road. Okay, on bank road where the dependency factor has always been friction. So these are the only possibilities we can so have. So if the road is on bank, it will always use the formula for friction, maximum okay. speed when friction. If the road is on bank, then frictional the frictional force is only provided by Sorry, the centripetal force is only provided by friction if the road is unbanked. But if the road is banked and there is no consideration for friction, then the R sine theta is what provides the centripetal force. Okay, if the road is banked and there is no friction, then only the R sine theta provides the centripetal force. If the road is banked and there is consideration for friction, then we have friction and then R sine theta providing the centripetal force. That's the difference. Okay, so let's continue from where we ended in our um, Optics, geometric optics or light. We go to reflection and we saw that under reflections, we have two main types of reflection, which is we have regular or specular reflection. And we also have diffused slash irregular reflection. So diffuse a uh, regular reflection occurs on smooth surfaces. Smooth surfaces such as the surface of mirror and the surface of well-polished floor, the surface of calm, calm water. Okay, so either mirror, well-polished walls or floors, and then calm, the surface of calmed water. 
these are examples of smooth surfaces. So for regular reflection, this surface must be very, very smooth. And this related lines indicates that this part is coated. In the case of mirror. And then this is the reflecting surface. And what happens is that for regular reflection, so this can be anything, mirror, wall, well-polished wall, or the surface of calm water. So incident light, light incident on the surface regularly or orderly. So these are the incident beam of light. A ray is denoted by an arrow at the middle. So this is the incident beam. Then the reflected rays are also orderly. So these are, let me extend the lines a little bit. So these are reflected beam. So this is what happens in regular reflection. Light incidents on the smooth surface in regular intervals, and it is also reflected in regular intervals. And usually, Whenever regular reflection occurs, there is a formation of image. There is a formation of image. That is why when you look at yourself in a mirror, you see a virtual image of yourself within the mirror. That is why whenever you walk on a well-polished surface, you see images of yourself and objects around, okay, on, on, on the surface of the floor or the wall, especially in offices. You, when you walk on well-polished floors, you see a virtual image of yourself and then objects around there. That is why when you are, when you are close to, um, a, the, the bank of a river and the surface is calm. You can even use that as a mirror. So whenever um, regular reflection occurs, there is a formation of image. Then let's look at irregular reflection. Irregular reflection, on the other hand, 
occurs on the surface, on rough surfaces. So the surface is rough. So this a indomie like or macroni like line represents rough surface. Meaning the cross sectional area isn't uniform as this one. Here, what happens is that light incident on the surface. in that orderly manner. The incident beam is in regular pattern. But because the surface is not regular, cross-sectional area is not even as this one, the reflected rays are not, the rays are not reflected in that orderly manner as how the incident beam were. The reflected rays are scattered because of the irregular manner of the surface. So this can be reflected over here. So reflected, 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 and reflected. Not in any proper order. So let me change the direction of this one. So the difference is that Light incident on the surface in that orderly manner. But over here, the reflection is scattered. Some could even crisscross. Yes, we can have a situation where some of the reflected rays even crossing each other. The whole point is that the reflected rays are not in orderly pattern as this one. And because of this, you wouldn't see any reflection if the surface is rough. And a typical example of this is what happens, you see, the sun, the light from the sun incident on the surface of the earth but because objects on the surface of the earth are of different different cross-sectional area it makes the reflection scattered or diffused and so no image will be formed on the surface of the earth we have stones sand Trees, Akosia, Equia Doma, Kenneth, tables, books. <laughs> so, and these are items with different, different cross sectional area. And so it scatters the reflected rays. And because of that, no image will be formed. So that is the that um the, the 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 conceptual application of diffuse reflection. Any question?
Is that yeah? Okay. Um, Cynthia, please, in JHS, they said the <laughs> angle of incidence should be equal to the angle of uh, reflection. So when yeah. it is scattered like this, does that uh, law rule each, say? Each, each one, incident reflected. Okay, this is the incident for this, this is the reflection. If I draw a normal here, so each of the incident and reflection obeys the law, but not when you have combined everything. Over here, let's look at it, um, the regular. We have one, two, three, four, incident um race okay one two three four reflected race each one 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 obey the laws of reflection that that the incident angle of incident equals the angle of reflection and the incident ray the normal and then the reflected ray all lie at the same place or plane. Okay, so each one obeys the law. Are you okay? Yes, sir. Any any more question? All right, then that ushers us into laws of reflection. Question. Can I do I clean it or you are not done drawing? Whether the surface is rough. Whether the surface is plain. Now let me use this. Rough surface. Whether the surface is plain. Whether the surface curves, the reflecting surface curves inwardly. Whether the reflecting surface curves outwardly. When light incident on any of these. So, incident ray. When you draw a normal from the point of incidence, and a normal is an imaginary perpendicular line. This is incident, this is reflection. So this is, let me change my marker. So for this, we are talking about rough surface. This one, we are talking about smooth surface. So when I incident light at an angle, and then a normal 
which is that imaginary perpendicular line. Incident, this is reflection. This is I, this is R, this is I, this is R. Plain surface or mirror. The normal is always important because that helps us to measure our angle of incidence and air reflection. This is I, this is R. This is, what kind of mirror is this? Okay, we haven't, okay. So this is, Yafan said, converging. We haven't done spherical camera, so convergent mirror. Then finally, Mm -hmm. This is normal. So angle of incidence. Mm -hmm. So I R. In each of these situations drawn, this is this is diverging mirror. The law of in, um, the, the laws of reflection is obeyed. And what does the law of reflection say? That whenever reflection light incidents on the surface whether rough, blah, blah, blah. Reflection would, uh, uh, would okay. Whether rough, plain, curved, or okay. Reflection would okay. But the extent of reflection depends on other factors, which we, we have studied as conditions, okay. But in each situation, you have the one incident, you have the incident, Ray reflected ray and the normal, which is at the point of incidence, at the point of incidence. lie in the same plane or they lie in the same place. That's the first law. So laws of reflection. So if you look at what is happening to for rough surface? This is the incident ray, reflected ray. And then the normal at the point of incident all lie at the same place. Oh, plane. If you look at plane mirror, the same thing. This one, okay. So each 
situation or nature of the surface obey the laws of reflection. The second law is that whenever you measure the angle of incidence, and this measurement is from the normal to the incident ray. Okay, the reflected, uh, the angle of reflection is also from the normal to the reflected ray. In each of these four situations, you have angle of incidence. equal to the angle of reflection. And these are the two main laws of reflection. So each, each reflection at a surface obeys the law. Okay, over to you. Whether rough, plain, curved, the laws of reflection, okay, are obeyed. Please, the, the angle of incidence and reflection are taken from the normal. So you must indicate your normal to measure angle of incidence what is the incidence ray? This is a reflected ray. So the angle of incidence is this angle between the normal and the incident ray, on and on and on. In plane mirrors, we call this angle between the incident ray and then the mirror as a glancing angle. So if this is a plane mirror, and there's the normal. When you incident light, this is the angle of incidence. Angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. But this angle between the mirror and then the incident ray is a glancing angle. So the glancing angle is the angle between the mirror and then the reflected ray. Then the other angle, this is I, this is R, but I is always equal to R, okay? The other angle is the angle of deviation. What is the angle of deviation? This ray is expected to go straight. This is the direction, ideally, is expected to go straight. But as a result of the interaction with the mirror, its path was changed from going straight to this. So the angle between its expected original path and then its new diversion, this angle becomes the angle of deviation, theta. So where uh, uh, um, alpha, this is, um, I'm, I'm even forgotten this symbol. This is what we are calling as angle of deviation. How the ray, part of the ray has been deviated. Now in, in plane mirrors, in plane mirrors, In plane mirrors, this is how we calculate this. So there's a mirror. The normal is an imaginary line. If you pick a mirror, you can't find a normal, no. So it's always an imaginary perpendicular line. 
because it's imaginary. Let me break it. So this is the normal N. So when you incident a ray, this becomes the angle of incidence I. Angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. So if this is x degree, this will also be x degree. So usually because of this, if this is I, this is also I. Even though we know this to be R, I and R, but the value is the same. And so if this is I, this is also I. Now this angle A is what we are calling A is equal to glancing angle. If I want to measure the angle of deviation, how the part of the ray is deviated, this, this must be the original part. This must be the original part. But as a result of its interaction with a well-polished surface, the part has been deviated from this to this side. And so if I'm, if I'm to determine the extent of deviation, this becomes the angle of deviation. So this angle, gamma, is the angle of deviation. So if I'm asked to calculate for the angle of deviation, for one deviation occurring at a surface, how do I calculate it? This is it. Look at this whole angle. This is 180 degree. So if I want this, if I want this, how do I calculate this? Somebody to help me. Please do it, think through it, and get back to me. If this whole angle is 180, and I want just this, how do I determine this angle? So do it, and then get back to me. Bento, what did you get for uh, the angle of deviation? The angle of deviation is equal to um, it equal to glancing the glancing angle. Bento, this this is the angle of deviation. This yeah. whole angle. Look at the arrow. So what will be the expression for the angle of deviation? Okay, let's have Immaculate to also come in. Immaculate. Sister Immaculate. Come in immaculately. Mr. Dear, please, I don't really get it. Oh, I get it. <laughs> I get it. You see, this is the original part of the array. 
this whole angle. Okay, a semicircle. Then we are looking for this angle, which I've labeled as sigma. Kati. Kati. And tell me, what have you seen? So, um, Ms. Edie, I think that since um, we are looking for a sigma, it will be 180 minus the other angle that we don't know. Ah, we know. The other angle, we know. Um, A. No. The nama, the angle of deviation, sigma is equal to, she has given us a clue. Um, please, um, the Gonson angle and then the parts that's beneath the, the mirror are vertically opposite. So if the Gonson mirror is A, then that part will also be A. And since the angle of incidence is equal to that of the angle of reflection, then uh -huh. that, um, the angle from the um, reflected ray to the mirror will also be A. Aye. Aye. Kati. Aye. Nanama. You are not observing well. This is the situation. The normal is here. This is angle of incidence. I. This is angle of reflection. Because they are equal, I, I. This, is, this must be the original part of the ray, but because of the mirror, it part is changed to this direction. And so this angle becomes the angle of deviation. Let's even close our eyes to the glancing angle. So if, if this is what we have, what will be the angle of deviation? Let me pick somebody else to also look at it and talk to us. Let me pick Ishra. Hey, Ishra, no, no, Ishra, no. <laughs> I want Kenneth. The only man in our midst, Kenneth. What will be the angle of deviation? Yes. Please. Then can you hear me? Then I can speak. Hey. Can are you talking? Oh. Okay, Andres, I take it over. Andres, let's go. Please, I think the angle of division will be 180 minus the two eyes over there. Exactly. Because this is 180. Anama, this is 180. So if this is I, then it means the angle between the incident ray, um, uh, angle of incident and angle of uh, will be total 2i. So when I subtract 2i from 180, I have this. So the angle of deviation for mirrors is equal to 180 minus 2i or 180 minus 2r. Because it is also equal to 180 minus 2R because if this is R, this will also be R. If you give me I, this is also I here. Yeah. Are you okay? Class, immaculate, Yanama, and the rest of you. 
Yes, please. Mm. But you see, it is true that as Nanama was saying, if this is A, this will also be A. And if this is A, because this is the normal, this will also be A. So when you total, we can also say that if you have the Granson angle, the angle of deviation can also be 2A, but it's also equal to 180 minus 2I and all that, right? So it depends on what you have and how to calculate this. Let me see if we can have a question to just try. Give me some time coming. Let me pause the recording and then. If this is I. And this is also I. Because, because this, please, what is this whole angle? What is this whole angle? What is this angle? Degrees. That's 90. And this is also 90. Because of that, if this is I, this is also I. Then this angle, which is the glancing angle, would also be 90 minus I. Because angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection, this other angle would also be 90 minus I. So, if you are looking for, if you are looking for the angle of deviation, if this is 90 minus I, of course, by vertically opposite angles, this will also be 90 minus I. And so we can say that the angle of deviation is equal to two times 90 minus I. Or the angle of deviation is equal to 180 minus two I. And look at something. When we expand this, when we expand this, we are getting the same results as when we have just subtra subtracted this from that. So let me give a question. Let me give you a question. And now I mute, mute yourself, unless you want to talk. So we have a mirror. There's a normal. The angle of incidence is 30 degrees. This is this is 30. This is also 30 degrees. It means this is the angle of deviation. Straight away, angle of deviation will be equal to 180 minus 2 times 30. 
with S. 180 minus 60. Angle of deviation, therefore, is equal to 120 degrees. Then glancing angle. Glancing angle, because this whole angle is 90, this is 60. Okay. So if this is 60, then this will also be 60. By vertically opposite reason, if this is 60, this will also be 60. So this plus this will give you this, or when you sum this up. So that is how to apply this in, in solving a question. I have a small problem. Then the small problem is this. A light ray is incident on a plane mirror as shown in the diagram below. A light ray is, is incident on a plane mirror as shown in the diagram. And there's the diagram. Margaret, are you there? Yes, please. This question is for you. I only prepared it for you, Immaculate. Okay. So I have so incident rate. Now there's a question. There's a plane mirror. So the question is that, which ray best represents the reflected ray? Immaculate, which ray best represents the reflected ray? And why? The rest of you must also think true. Because from your colleague, it is coming to you. Yes, Margaret. Which ray best represents the reflected ray? Immaculate, are you there? Hey, she's gone. No. What a wow. Okay. Um, Equia. Equia, Duma. You said, yeah. Which ray best represents the reflected ray and why? D, because. Um, the angle of incidence must be equal to the angle of reflection, provided there's a normal. So yes, and, and a different view. And a different view of anywhere. Of anywhere, Ella. 
Mr. Dia. What do you also think? Which ray best represents the reflected ray? Please, I also think um, D. What's the reason? Um, because the angle of incidence must be equal to the angle of um, reflection. And according to that, mm -hmm. I think D will be the reflected way. Kenneth, what do you think? I also think it's C. This is because A looks like the normal. A looks like the normal. If A looks like the normal, then look at this angle. And then this angle. Though it's an estimation, but they need to be almost the same. D seems to be so much skewed from the normal. Okay. And it is based on the fact that angle of incidence must equal the angle of reflection. So, yes, maybe this is not drawn so well, but the closeness of the two angles, angle of incidence and then angle of reflection is what we use to judge. Okay. Abinua. Abinua. Your own question. Your own question. Listen to it attentively. Yeah. Yes. Abinua, when, when a student looks into a plain mirror, she sees a virtual image or the virtual image of herself. So when a student looks into a plain mirror, she sees a virtual image of herself. However, when she looks into a sheet of paper, no such image is formed. Which light phenomenon occurs at the surface of the paper? Or which light phenomenon explains this? And I'm taking the question again. When a student looks into a plain mirror, she sees a virtual image of herself. However, when she, she looks into a sheet of paper, no such image. Which light phenomenon best explains this or occurs at the surface, on the surface of the sheet? Yes, of anyone, or of the paper. Which light phenomenon explains this? That you, you, you look at yourself in a plain mirror, you see a virtual image of yourself. However, when you look through a sheet of paper, no such image is formed. Which light phenomenon explains that? Abino, are you ready? Abino, are you ready? I'm saying, Abino, I'm coming in back. So, trying to. What do you have to say? Um, you can repeat the question. When a student, when Fanto sees herself in a mirror, she sees yes. a virtual image of herself. However, when Fanto sees, look at herself in a sheet of paper, no such image is formed. What light phenomenon explains this? Um, Akosia. 
Akosia, what do you think? Reflection of life with is it correct? It's not correct. Let me <laughs> let me pick individual view. So Adwa Sante, what which light phenomenon explains this? That you look at yourself in a mirror, you see, you get a virtual image of yourself. However, when you look at yourself uh, in a sheet of paper, no such image is formed. Which light phenomenon explains this? Adwa. Okay, Akuya. Time is going. Time is going, so. Mr. Dia. Mm -hmm. Please, with the, with the mirror, um, it's because of regular reflection, but with the paper, it's irregular, so the uh, rays don't convert to form an image. That's, that's why. That's correct for three points. That's, that's correct for three points. So the light phenomenon responsible for this is just because of irregular reflection of light. Okay. Okay, so the last question. The last question, please listen. Two plane mirrors are positioned perpendicularly to each other. Two plane mirrors are positioned perpendicularly to each other. A ray of red light. A ray of red light is incident on mirror one at an angle of incidence of 55 degree. A ray of red light is incident on mirror one at an angle of incidence 55 degree. This ray is reflected from mirror one and then, and then strikes mirror two. This ray is reflected from mirror one and strikes mirror two. I determine the, the angle at which the ray is incident on mirror two. I determine the angle at which the ray is incident on mirror two. Then I, I determine the total deviation. Determine the total angle of deviation. Maybe you do it, take that as an assignment and then send it to me. So two plane mirrors are positioned perpendicularly to each other. So mirror one, mirror two are positioned perpendicularly to each other. A ray of red light is incident on mirror one at an angle of incidence of 55 degree. This ray is reflected from mirror one and then strikes mirror two. This ray is reflected from mirror one and then strikes mirror two. I determine the angle of, determine the angle at which the ray is incident on mirror two. And I, I determine the total deviation, determine the total deviation, either total deviation or resultant deviation. This is your assignment. So you do this and then send it to me by tomorrow. Teja, please can you send it to the group too? Nothing, I'll do that.
you do it and then send it to me by tomorrow. Okay, so this is where I draw the curtains on our meeting. If you have any question, ask. If you don't have any question, we call it a day or uh, an evening. Agria, any question? No, sir.